Okay, so uh, this is what we're looking at. Okay, we are assuming that there is an increase in the population growth by 20 units. Okay, so for the old one, uh, we, this is the old one, okay? Assuming this is the old labor supply function, 115 and then 18W over P. So what is going to be the effect of, what is going to be the effect of, Right, so I, let's let's go over the interpretation. Mm -hmm. I said that before you can get the this thing, you need to you need to differentiate the labor supply function with respect to the real wage. Okay, with respect to the real wage. So let's use the third one, the third function. When you differentiate n x with, with respect to w over p, you get twenty five. So this is the interpretation if the real wage should increase by one unit then the labor supply curve will increase by 25 units. if real wage should increase by just a unit uh, let's use ghana if we increase our real wage by one city then labor supply will increase by 25 okay by 25 units. i hope that's okay Yes. Okay. Right. So let's go back to the question. Uh, the increase in population is 20 units. And this is the old labor supply function. So we want to look at the effect of this increase in uh, population. Right. So this is going to be the new labor supply function just add the 20 to the old labor supply function okay so when you add 20 it's going to be part of the intercept so instead of 115 we are now going to get what 135 and then 18 uh, 18 w over p this means that the labor supply curve is going to shift to the right okay the labor supply curve can only rotate if there's a change in the wage rate but any change in the intercept is going to cause a shift, okay, a, a shift in the labor supply curve or function. All right, so you can choose to draw this. Mm, you get a sheet of paper and then you draw the first one and then draw the second one. So there's something you can do. Okay, now we want to go to the labor market and output determination, please. Uh, take note of what we will be doing and the math that we will be doing uh, is always in the past questions. Okay, it's always there and it's very easy. So let's 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 dive into it. So we want to determine equilibrium output. So here, uh, per this theory, before you can get your equilibrium output, then you need to get your equilibrium units of labor, your n. The reason is that the, the production function is a function of n. So if we are able to get our n, then we can always get our y. I'm sure you remember from the first lecture, okay? The production function is a function of labor and capital, but for this state, we assume capital is constant. And if that's the case, then uh, labor is a positive function of, what, of output. So if we know the value of labor, then we can always get the value of uh, output. So our job is to get a N star, and we can get N star in the labor market. And you getting an N star means that you are getting real wage star too, okay? When there's an equilibrium in the labor market, we get a equilibrium N and equilibrium real wage. So after doing that, then we can come and get a Y star, right? So uh, these are the graphs or the curves or the functions that we need before we can determine our equilibrium output. First, we need a labor demand curve of which we did last week. We need a labor supply curve, what we just did, and then the production function, okay? The production function, and as we we're saying, the production function is a function of what? Labor, and so Y is a function of N. So our job is just to get our N, okay? 
So uh, we have equilibrium in the labor market when the demand for labor is exactly the same as the supply of labor. So this is going to give us our equilibrium N and our equilibrium real wage. So when we are done, when we put a value of N star into the production function, then we can get our Y star. So basically that is what we will be doing. Go to the labor market, get your equilibrium and you go to the output market, then you go and put your N inside the production function to get your Y star, as simple as that, okay? Right. Okay, so uh, the equations that we, I mean, we'll be needing or the functions that we need, we need the labor supply, labor demand production function, and then these are the equilibrium values that we get after we are done with our computation. And remember, labor demand is a function of uh, the real wage, but it's a negative function. We did this last week. What we just did, the labor supply is a positive function of real wage. And at equilibrium, okay, in the labor market, then NS is supposed to be equal to NS. So these are the equations, and there's an identity, okay, that will be needed. Inside. Okay, and then the production function, which is now a positive function of N, assuming capital is constant, okay? When capital is constant. So these are the functions that we'll be using. So graphically, okay, graphically, when you are... Uh, graphically, this is what you have to do. You need to know how to do this because at times, after doing the maths, you'll be asked to sketch the graphs. So the first one is the labor market. This is your labor supply function. This is your labor demand function or, or curve, or unless you scarce, okay? So where they meet, you get your real equilibrium real wage and then your equilibrium N. Then you extend this to the output market. Okay, so this is your production function. Yeah. So in the output market, you just put this your N into the production function, then you get your equilibrium Y. Please, please, please know how to draw this because you will need it. Hmm? You need it. I'm sure Dr. Boyma will be teaching you this. If you don't bring this graph, eh, the way he will cancel it, I've seen him mark before and it was it was it was bad mm -hmm. so if the things that he's looking out for if you don't bring them he'll just cancel everything he doesn't even look at what you are writing so please and he's interested in caps a lot so take note of this okay so in a labor market this where we get a equilibrium w over p and then equilibrium n and then given our n we can always get our y Okay, so that is what we will be doing. This is just the graph, and then uh, let's look at the maths. Okay, so um, take your pen and your paper. Uh, let's use the other PowerPoint, okay, where I've solved the question. Okay, can you see the screen? Yes, I can. Okay, you can see the screen. Yes. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, so this is a production function. We've been given y equals 2000 kn minus 1 over n squared, okay? 
Then the labor supply function, 250, a positive function of W over P. And then we have a ND, a negative function of W over P. We have to determine and explain the slopes of the labor demand and the supply curves, assuming K is equal to one. So when K is one, that's what we have to do. And then uh, we have to de determine N star, W over P star, and then Y star. So that's what we'll be doing here. Uh, just know that the labor demand function will not always be given. But I remember last week, uh, did you download this thing, this uh, PowerPoint from the Dropbox? That's of last week or this week? Now, this one, uh, the last week's own two is inside. I'm talking about this one or the ones that I created myself. No. Those ones two are there. When you go there, you no. see the Zoom folder. And when you open the okay. Zoom folder, you, you will see the Zoom videos there. And then you see mm -hmm. examples. The micro is there. Okay, we, we've not done, but that one too is there. And then the uh, the mass, the one that we did last week, the, that one too is there. And this one too is there. So you can go there and download it, okay? All right. Okay, so let's let's start. Let's start. And then uh, the season, we have to provide a rough sketch of our answers, you, you see? So you need to know how to draw it. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, so this is the information that we have. And now we want to, let's look at the demand for labor care first. Mm -hmm. So first, we need to differentiate the labor demand function with respect to the real wage, okay? And doing the differentiation we get what negative two okay we get negative two from echo mass we cannot do this mm -hmm. okay so this means that if real wage should increase by a unit then labor demand will decrease by two units okay so that's the, the interpretation after the differentiation you get negative two this means that if the real wage should increase by a unit then the demand for labor will decrease by two. Oh, uh, <laughs> let me, <laughs> Look <over> this, <laughs> let me change this. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so we are looking at the supply of labor curve. And for this one, when you do the differentiation, you get eight. Mm -hmm. You get eight. Audrey, what to be the interpretation? Um, this means that if railway should increase by units, um, supply of labor will increase by eight units. Yeah, very good. So exactly, uh, if uh, the railway should increase by one unit, then labor supply will increase by eight units. I hope you understand. Okay, so we move on. Okay, so now in the labor market, as stated earlier, we, we have equilibrium when ND is equal to NS. So we just equate the two functions. After equating them, we just make W over P the subject. So this one, you cannot do it on paper. Mm -hmm. So just group like this. Okay, so we get 10 W over P is equal to 50. We divide through by 10. So we get W over P star, is equal to five. W over P star is equal to five, okay? W over P star is equal to five. So these are real wage. These are real wage. You see, it's very simple. Very simple. 
equilibrium we have is yes, equilibrium we have which is five. Okay, so if it's in cities, then we are getting five cities. So now that we have our W over P, we can find our N by either putting this into N D or N S. We are bound to get the same answer. So it doesn't really matter which one you do the substitution with. Okay, so now let's get our NS or our N star. Okay, so N star is going to be what, 250. The, the, the function was, at which, which screen can you see? Is it this one, the double one, or just a single one? A blank screen. Okay, so this one, eh? Like yes. where Keza is? Wait, I can see everything. No, they are in three folds. Like this one, the blank screen. I have followed the Keza. This one, this one, and this one. Uh, yes. Hey. And which one? <laughs> My mom and this one. <laughs> which one? L I mean, let's this one. The dark one. This one, eh? Yes, this yes, one. Yes. And then this small one here. Yes. And then this big one. <laughs> can I see? can't see any other thing. No. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Uh -huh. Then let's let's look at the small one here. Mm? Okay. Uh -huh. So the end star we put the five, the W over P star, which is five, into the labor supply function, okay? So we'll get about what is ha happening. Something went wrong. I'm coming. <laughs> okay. I'm coming. Okay, so after getting your W over P to be five, we put it into the labor supply function, okay? So this is what we are getting. N star is equal to 250 and then we add that for, so we are getting what, 290. So the equilibrium N is 290 units, okay? So now that we have N star, we can find our Y star, okay? So Y star would be equal to, remember the production function was 200 K N minus one over four N squared. So putting K is equal to one where K is and then 290 where N is, this is what we get for Y star. Okay? So this is the value of Y star, very simple, very simple. So this is your Y star, okay? This is your Y star, all right. Any question? Do we all understand? Yes. What about the rest? Audrey, Audrey one and two, do you understand? Yes, please. Yes, please. I just want to do you understand? Yes, I do. Okay. Yes. Anna. Yes, please I do. Okay, good, good, good. Right. Mm. Okay, so you can go there and uh download it, okay? Okay, so Okay. We are going back to, can you see the screen? Yes, please. Okay, right, so this was the example that we just looked at. Hey, and the, the rough sketch, hmm? you can do it, eh? Just do it in your books. First, you do it for the labor market, 
then where the nd and the ns curves meet your w over p is now five your n zero is now what 290 then you trace it downwards you draw your production function the n is still there 290 and then you get your y to be what we had do it do it do it now now and show it to me sketch it and show it to me okay so uh we are to look at the factors that determine output in this model or system okay okay so this is what we have been doing we're using the labor market to derive our equilibrium output and we did this by using the labor demand curve the supply curve and then the production function but what what are the factors that affect output if you remember last week we said that for this group of economists they believe okay they believe that uh, anything that can affect output is supposed to be a real factor the nominal factors cannot cause a change uh, cannot cause a lasting effect on uh, they have no lasting effect on output okay so we want to talk about something like money money is seen as a nominal factor government spending is seen as a nominal factor so they have no lasting effects on the economy specifically output so they believe that is only real factors that can cause a change in real variables okay so we want to uh, look at those factors and uh, anything that can cause a change in a position of the labor demand curve the labor supply curve and then the production function those are the real factors the real uh, factors that can cause a change in uh, Output. Uh, so those are the labor demand curve, the su supply curve, and then the production function. So we want to look at some of these functions of variables. What are some of the variables that that can cause these changes? Okay. And the first one is what exogenous change in marginal product of labor. If by any chance, now uh, the benefit that the firms get from the last unit hired increases then we know there's going to be a positive shift in the demand curve which will cause an increase in output if there's a change in population we looked at that if there's a change in capital stock and technology those ones are, are affect the production function okay those ones it will cause the production function to be more steeper which will cause uh, an increase in the output so let's let's look at the uh, interpretation if okay so the, this is for mpn so that's what i was saying if the last unit of labor hired by the firm will be adding more to the firm's re revenue then that is going to cause the firm to de demand more and demanding more means that there's going to be an increase in n which will result in an increase in y so it has a lasting effect on output and also if there's an increase in population we saw this okay we saw this that the curve will shift to the right okay the supply curve will shift to the right which will also cause an increase in equilibrium and, and consequently an increase in y star okay and then if there's an increase in the capital stock then the uh, production function will shift upwards which means that there's going to be higher level of output at the existing level of n all these things you can use the graphs to look at how those changes will affect the y okay and then if uh, there's an increase in technology that one to cause the production function 
to be steeper and by so it means that there's going to be uh, increase in output even at the same level of n i'm sure you know that whenever there's an increase in the technology of doing things of creating things then uh, there's an increase in output okay but so all what we've been talking about is uh, for this group of economy they believe in real factors as opposed to nominal factors okay so something like money and uh, government spending they have no effect on output okay uh, the time is almost up uh i'll be putting an exercise there so you go there to go and check you do it you can write it on a paper you take a picture of it and then upload it i will see it there or if you can do it in pdf form that one too i can do it i'll mark it there and i'll send it back to you so you know what to do okay any question any question uh, this is just